Hi, good morning, and welcome to the ZP Vlog and Podcast. So we do this vlog and podcast every Sunday at 8 a.m. London time, and it's really just a wrap-up on the news for this week. So if I jump straight into it, um, one of the things that we did announce this week is that we're going to do a um, ZP workshop on the 9th of May in Coventry. I mean, just as a sort of side note, you know, these we do a workshop um, second week of every month in Coventry and the first week of every month in Norway. The Norway one happens to be two days and the Coventry one happens to be um, one day, but they're both, I would say, excellent, full of content, um, so full of practicals, you know, that people actually get to make a glucose sensor, make an oxygen sensor and essentially do a lot of the um, experiments that, um, you know, we have a list of kind of things that we describe that we do in the workshop and people actually get to do this in practicality um, as well. So really looking forward to that workshop in May in Coventry. Um, every week we do do our ZP Developer Zone um, webinar. Um, this is really answering questions that came in um, during the week. We also had some live questions during the um, webinar this week. We had somebody asking about the Easy Flex, um, and I'm hoping that they will come in and put their questions into our Contact Us box on our website. Um, but the questions that were kind of we knew about beforehand um, was CGM, continuous glucose monitoring, NO, nitric oxide monitoring, and PEC2 cell, which is a um, photoelectrochemical technology. Um, identifying elements in ores. I think this person was really looking for some sort of, you know, almost, well, it is x-ray vision, you know. Can I look at an ore and can I tell what's in there? Well, you can if you use XRD, x-ray diffraction. And the reason that this is not, you know, like a, a wonder thing for everyone is just the cost. It's just the cost and the throughput and the energy that it requires. Um, we did talk about microneedles. We did talk about pH and oxygen sensing in soil. And we did talk about sensors verified for cell culture measurements. And it's kind of an interesting question because the fact is we do use them in cell culture, but they're not verified for it, you know, and, and that, that sort of verification is a kind of interesting comment here because verification sort of is almost like a blanket statement. You know, you could verify it for a particular maybe strain of E. coli under a certain set of conditions or maybe verify it for a certain stem cell lineage but absolutely verifying it for all applications is um, really quite tough. We did talk about uh, metal oxide mo modification. This is really quite straightforward. You kind of just dissolve these metal nanoparticles um, into a sort of carrier solution. You drop cast it and you let the solution evaporate away. Um, and then we also talked about streptavidin modification of electrodes. And we hope that was useful to um, the people who put those questions in uh, that this week. Um, some other news from Zimmer and Peacock this week. Um, we are also being put out a few articles. Um, an interesting um, inquiry about sensors for cooling fluid contamination. So I love these um, industrial applications. A lot of what we do at ZP is medical related. We are ISO 13485. Um, this means that we have a certification that allows us to develop and manufacture for medical um products mostly around biosensors and electrochemical biosensors but of course that skill set in sensors that we do at a really high quality standards um, on client projects does mean that we can sort of um, essentially play in other areas um, as well and one of those would be you know looking at fluids that are used in industry so we were delighted to kind of get that inquiry um, and in this particular inquiry, um, we were just looking for chemical contaminants. So this is really part of Industry 4.0 for us. Um, I love the fact that we're going to live in an age where um, machines, I mean, it can sound a little frightening as well, but, you know, machines will talk to machines and, um, you know, machines could even be manufactured by other, mach uh, by other parties. So that what I mean by that is once upon a time, people used to make technologies and they say, yeah, if you buy this technology from me, this technology from me, and this technology from me, these will all work together. In the future, it will actually be, you can buy technologies from different suppliers and actually they'll all work together um, through common protocols. So we're being asked to look at fluids in, or rather contaminations in cooling fluids, but these will have to work with third party devices. So very um, literally exciting for us. Um, something else that we 
personally, um, if you ever do Google my name um, and um, you put word jaundice in there, you'll see I've got a couple of patents out there. But um, the detection of jaundice in juveniles and therefore juvenile jaundice is something that ZP has experience in. And we just put a little bit of a note out there. It's a, it's a, like a literally a horrible thing, let's say. And actually, I think that in Asia, um, it is in particular a problem. And I think it's, lit it's partly because obviously jaundice can be seen by a sort of slight yellowing of the skin. But of course, depending on your native skin color, then it can be easier or harder to see that jaundice. So um, detecting jaundice, which is caused by a buildup of bilirubin in the blood, um, this is the kind of analyte that ZP is good at detecting and we're quite happy to be involved in programs um, around that. And we also, um, something that we've also quite a, quite good at at ZP is, um, it's a funny old thing. I've been um, personally involved and, and not involved, in, well, involved with paracetam, paracetamol um, quite a bit, even started with my undergraduate work. Um, I was making molecules that were very similar to um, paracetamol. Um, I think it's called a ceta cetamide, cetalinamide. It's been such a long time since I've thought of the chemical name. But this is this um, paracetamol, you know, is a sort of um, non-steroid um, anti-inflammatory, I think they would call them or something like that. Um, you know, it's ubiquitous within society. You can buy it over the counter. The problem is that either people deliberately um or or um by essentially by accident or sometimes even animals ingest this um paracetamol and actually take it in toxic levels and therefore when you're kind of coming to the um er room or the intensive care they need to be able to check whether you've got paracetamol levels that are particularly high I and mean, paracetamol is horrible because it causes um liver failure or limit liver damage followed by liver failure but it is something that we can detect on the kind of technologies that we like to do at ZP. So we um, we just put out there as a sort of little note about the um, effects of paracetamol toxicity and just the kind of comment that ZP um, actually can detect or make, create technology to detect it. Something else that we put out there this week. Um, at ZP, we do have um, an awful lot of technologies around um nanopore and so i was just uh, making a point this week of promoting the fact that we do have these um, nanopore technologies i mean a nanopore is an, essentially a uh, how do i describe it a surface and through that surface there may be a, a hole that has a sort of diameter of something like 20 nanometers um, now what you can do is you can measure the resistance through that hole so if I put an electrode either side of the hole um, and applied a voltage, I'd have a current passing through it. Now, because the hole is so small, it's kind of on a molecular scale hole. As um, molecules go through that hole, they cause a change in resistance. And the profile of this resistance change um, can be used to identify that molecule or to count that molecule. So at ZP, we quite like um new technologies it's funny because i was about to say that nanopores are new technologies but i realized that actually nanopore technology sort of started its life in the early 90s so like everything that's great in the world so to say it's 30 years since this kind of technology was first um considered and i think that genuinely is the way of things um at least in science and engineering that it can take 30 or 40 years or something to really realize its full potential. So um, at ZP, um, we do have some nanopore technologies. These are kind of enabling technologies. And um, we're happy to be kind of involved in that kind of um, science. Something else now, and this is probably for us, I mean, this is a sort of personal thing at, at ZP for us, that we're going to have a Scandinavian Census Summit on the 13th to the 14th of September 2023. Now, what does this mean? So the Scandinavian Census Summit for us is a um, bringing together of um, people and companies that are interested in census. Now, at ZP, obviously, we're very interested in, you know, biosensors, um, medical applications. I have talked about industry applications today at, at Industry 4.0. So really, this, this um, conference is almost a kind of 
collection of all things that we find personally and as a business um, quite interested in. You know, so we're talking about digitization for a sustainable future. And um, I love the fact that you know we are literally digitizing this world. I mean, Google Maps is a kind of is a classic example of digitization. And we are going to talk about detecting chemicals um, in the in the liquid phase. So what can I say by that? Yeah, you know, for example, glucose will be a classic um, um, detection of a chemical. We are going to talk about condition sensing. So um, condition sensing would be sort of what is the condition of this environment or this piece of equipment. So a piece of equipment might be have a certain vibration, and when it starts to um, malfunction, that vibration can start increasing. Um, and so that would be a sort of condition monitoring on that sensor. And we're also going to have um, talks on detection in and quantification in the gas phase. So at ZP, we do talk a lot about um, biosensing and we often talk about the liquid phase. Now we have stepped into the gas phase. Um, can I say a little bit? Um, so we do want to talk about that. And we also want to talk about... Um, sensors in space and sensors in the sea this is more like an applications but i do love the idea that um literally i know that there are sensors in space so for example um there are sensors in um on the mars rovers and these these sensors on the mars rovers happen to be ises iron selective electrodes so it's exciting um we're also going to talk about sensors in, um, for aquaculture and agriculture um super interesting topic for us the human populations you know is going to need food and it's going to need that food in a sustainable manner and this has to be a balance between agriculture and aquaculture so i know that you know people can be quite um anti sometimes can i say salmon farming and fish farming and i do appreciate you know that that actually that needs to become a more sustainable industry but at the same time it is a good source of protein and you know we as a human population, we will need some of this. So we do have talks on um, agriculture and aquaculture. We're also going to have talks on the gas and petro um, petrochemical industry. Even though the world is going electrification and the gas industry and the pet petrochemical industry is sometimes not considered, you know, an environmental friendly industry. And I, and I understand that point. It's for me, those petrochemicals, if used correctly, and I think used correctly means, you know, making materials or making pharmaceuticals making things that you know help us as humans rather than just put them in a petrol tank and burning i think that's a little bit sad um, but we will have talks uh, on that as well and that's just day number one and day number two we're going to have talks on sensors in medicine which you can appreciate at zp we're pretty knowledgeable on. we're going to have talks about mems um mechanical electromechanical systems it's a sort of different way of fabricating sensors and we're going to have wearables and implantable sensors, so sweat sensors and maybe implantable glucose sensors. And we are going to have talks on um, sensors in research. Or maybe I, and this is really sensors that are coming from the kind of research community. Um, and then we are going to have actually some, you know, I really want to support the um, startup community. I just heard this morning that um, VC funding in the startup community, I think globally, is like 50% down on this time last year. So, it is going to be tougher for companies to sort of start up in that um, sort of mode. But we do have our Scandinavia Census Summit. You can see we're already planned for a very um, busy schedule, if I can put it that way. And I just want to say that registration actually is open for that. So if you start Googling Scandinavian Census Summit, maybe put Zimmer Peacock in there, you will start to find um, the ZP Scandinavia Census Summit. So if I was to sort of wrap up the news from ZP for this week, you can see that... Um, We've put out some notes around jaundice and detecting analytes in coolants or contaminants in coolants. Um, we have put some notes out there um, around um, the fact that we have a workshop on the 9th of May and then we have a big conference on the 13th and 14th. And then also we did, we did touch on biosensors for toxicity, which plays into this whole interest in medical from Zimmer and Peacock. So very busy. Um, if you have any um, any questions of ZP, don't hesitate to contact us. Um, if the questions are technical, then you definitely will find us every Thursday at 8 a.m. London time doing our um, webinar for our ZP developer zone. Okay, so that'll wrap up for this week. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us and have a good week. Okay, thanks very much.